you ever feel tight in your hips? Believe it or not, stretching is not the best way to get rid of tightness. In fact, stretching could lead to instability, including hip instability, that could then lead to more of the sensation of tightness over time. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. I'm Dr. Ariel Foster. I'm a physiotherapist or physical therapist, a yoga teacher of 20 years, founder of Yoga Anatomy Academy, and I'm the creator of a yoga journal course called Yoga for 3D Hip Stability. One of the most common complaints I hear from yogis, but also from physical therapy patients and from people in general, is that we're tight in our hips, specifically in the front of our hips. And one of the most common poses we do in yoga asana is lunges and variations of lunges. So for example, warrior one, warrior two, Anjane Asana, Crescent Lunge, all examples of lunges that in theory should quote unquote open up or stretch the front of the back hip. I used to think that one of the best things we could do to open up the front of our hips was to go deeper in these lunges. But now I know that most lunges are basically back bends. These deep lunges are very unlikely to change our hips. Here's why. The average human has less than 20 degrees of hip extension before we hit bone to bone. So hip extension is when the thigh goes backwards, like so. After that, we start to go into an anterior pelvic tilt and lumbar extension or a back bend. Because we start to hit bone to bone after about just 20 degrees, which is very, very little of hip extension, we, when we go deeper into a lunge, we're really just going deeper into a back bend, and we may even be doing uh, harm to our hips in terms of stretching out the anterior ligaments around the joints. Today we're going to play with a stability-based concept that should produce even better opening at the front of the hips. It's called reciprocal inhibition. Reciprocal inhibition is a concept formed from two foundational beliefs. One, our brain is too smart to, um, to basically engage opposing muscles at the same time. So when I want to spread my fingers, the brain knows to take the, the muscles on the inside of the fingers that would squeeze them back together and not, not fight the movement that I want to do. Another example of that is if I'm lifting something heavy, bending my elbow, engaging biceps and the family of muscles at the front of the, for, uh, front of the upper arm, the triceps is going to be in a relaxed state, a relatively relaxed state at the back. So as I engage, for example, the hip flexors, the glutes in the back and the hip extensors should relax. As I engage the hip extensors, the hip flexors should relax. I think you know where I'm going with this. So here's the practice that we're going to do. First, come into a simple lunge of your choice. It doesn't matter which one it is, I'm gonna take a basic crescent lunge. And I want you to use this as a bit of an assessment to any kind of tightness you might be feeling at the front of the hip right now. It doesn't have to be deep, we're not warmed up. Second, you're gonna stand with most of your weight on one foot. So the same leg that was in back is gonna be in back now. Make sure you're standing on the leg that was in front for your lunge. Stand on that leg, get really tall, draw your front hip points up so that there's a little bit of muscular engagement at the front of your abdomen. And other leg goes back, this is my maximum hip, hip extension before I go into um, an anterior tilt and lumbar extension in my back and then start to lean forward just a little bit. Your standing leg's working hard, but this back leg, hip extensors are gonna lift. We're gonna pretend we're in bar class. We're really in that first initial stage of going into warrior three. And then just a few more of these lifts from the inner thigh. I want you to feel um, the glutes work, so feel free to put your hand there, get that biofeedback. Feel free to put your hands on your torso to make sure your back's not doing this work. Some of you might feel this in your back, and if you do, take a pause, reset, and make the movement smaller. All right, we've done plenty of those. Go back into your lunge, and just notice if anything feels different. Did you drop down deeper? 
Did it feel a little less tight at the front? What did you notice? So hopefully from that little test, retest and trial of reciprocal inhibition, you noticed a little bit more freedom at the front of your hip. This concept of using muscle strength and stability to create openness has profound and big implications in the world of yoga asana. I hope you learned something from this video today. If you would like more techniques like this one, if you would like to know how to create sustainably and truly strong and open hips, join me in my course, Yoga for 3D Hip Stability. It's a four week course that's offered live and recorded so that you can take it anytime. I'll see you there.